Hello and welcome to another Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite forms of power in MC Eternal, and it is the Immersive Engineering Water Wheel. As always, if you find these to be helpful, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, all that jazz. It really does help us out. And we'll hop right into this. So the first thing I want to say before you get too attached to this idea is that you should not do the water wheel if you're looking for large amounts of power. It is not that great, and honestly, there are much better alternatives for you to look into if you're looking for early game power. With that said, it is one of my favorites because it is one of the most aesthetically pleasing to me. As you can see, water falls from the top, pulls over water wheels, which are actually turning. If I come here and look, you can see that the water wheels are actually turning. The water wheels go into a dynamo, which uses that turning power, the kinetic power of the turn to then relay that to a battery. So the process itself is fairly simple, but we'll go through step by step how to set it up, make sure you have everything that you need. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go up a fair ways because this needs to have water falling, obviously. So just make sure that you go up a fair ways. And the first thing you're gonna do is put up a kinetic dynamo facing one direction. You can see that this block has like a directional face. You want this section that has the black hole to be facing the direction of the wheels. So when I go to the wheels here, we just place three of them in a row. You can only put three in a row. You can do one, two, three. Once you have this three basic setup, you're just going to mirror it on the other side. And again, you don't have to do this. You can certainly do this with just one of these but I like the look of having two at once or even a big long row of them. Once we've set up that, we're gonna set up the water platform. So the water has to roll off the top and hit one side of the wheels, which is going to create sort of like this fracturing effect in the water and it's gonna splash off. That's totally fine. Um, but yeah, just be aware. We need to make sure to leave the top of these two blocks clear. So we're gonna generate this water platform really quick. Now that we've made the water generation platform, all we have to do is place some water here. And you can see that the water starts flowing off the, off the top. It starts hitting the wheels and the wheels start spinning. And if you want to get rid of this uh, sort of like splay out here, all you have to do is come down here and just knock out the block underneath the water. You might have to place a few of these bricks to just like stop the water flow. All right, once you've put all the bricks all the way around, you can just knock them out and it'll go right into the ground. And you get that nice clean look. As you can see, the water's flowing off the top, it's hitting the wheels, it's spinning the wheels, the wheels are spinning the kinetic dynamo. So now all we have to do is hook that kinetic dynamo up to power, and we should be good to go. So in order to do that, we're going to use something called the LV wire connector, the LV wire relay, and the LV wire coil. Now keep in mind that all this stuff, you can find out its patterns and its cost by coming here if we search LV coil. We can come up here, we can see that it costs copper wire and a stick. It's not too, too bad. Like I said, there are much better early game power situations. This one is just for the look. Um, so I think the most expensive thing in this entire energy build is a steel ingot. So you should theoretically have power by the time you can build these. But if you don't, they do work in a pinch. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the LV wire connector and you're going to place one on the top and this little copper dot that's on the top of these, just like that. And then we're going to build the power system from there. So I'm just going to come down to the center here, build down, and I'm going to build out to each side. The reason you build out to the side is so we can put this LV wire relay 
on the side because the wire can't go through the wheel to our capacitors. So what we need to do is make sure that our capacitors can actually get power from our dynamos. So here we're just going to take an LV wire coil, connect this to the relay, and you can see the little wire actually runs here. And it's worth noting that if you're in survival or something like that, you really don't want to touch these wires after they're laid. You do get shocked. And creative doesn't, doesn't matter, but in the actual one, it does matter. So again, we're going to connect our LV wire connector that's on the top of our kinetic dynamo over to our LV wire relay. Now we do the relay because as the name says, you can connect the relay twice. It relays an energy signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to place an LV capacitor. This is sort of like a cheap battery in immersive engineering. And then once we've done that, we're going to put a connector on the top of each of those batteries and an energy conduit in between. Then we're just going to take another LV wire coil, take it from each relay, and connect it to the top of the capacitors. You can see that the wires start going. And if I come to an empty hand here and look at this capacitor, you can see that it's starting to generate IF, which has a one-to-one -one ratio with RF. So we have power that's being generated by these water wheels. It looks super aesthetically pleasing. And it generates about 30 RF per tick. It's not great, but each one generates 30 RF per tick. So right now this is generating 90 RF per tick on this kinetic dynamo. This one's generating 90 RF on this kinetic dynamo. And you're left with about 180 RF per tick coming down in this line to go do whatever you would like for it to do. If you have any questions about how this works, any more power tips, anything like that, please let me know, leave a comment down below, or you can look in the description and find our Discord. I'm always more than happy to answer questions on there. As always, if this has been helpful, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. You can take a look in the description for a link to our Patreon and our Twitch, or other various links to support us. If you could click through some of those, or at least take a look, that would be very much appreciated. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, it really does help, and hopefully we'll see you next week.